Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Living the Life Show. I'm your host, Columbus Cody, and today let's talk about three terms that every believer should understand or should have a good grasp of. The first one is sin. Three letter word with a very, very, very misunderstood concept. Sin is rebellion or resistance to God and to God's word. There's two ways, two, two ways we can look at sin. There's willful sin or known sin. We know what we're doing is wrong and yet we're doing it. And then there's unknown sin. We don't even know what we're doing. We didn't realize I was sinning. Now, there's a difference between sin and a mistake. If I'm doing my math and I forget to carry the one, that's a mistake. That's not sin. But sin is when I know what God has told me to do and I don't do it. I don't honor what the word has to say. I don't live by what is being taught out of the Bible. I do it my way. That is sin to rebel against God and to rebel against his rule. That is sin. Uh, in Romans 5 and 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passes upon all men for that all have sin. One man, Adam, God created Adam, made a perfect man. He was perfect. Then he created the woman from the man. And then he told these two, he says, listen, you can have everything in this garden, everything, but one tree I want you to stay away from. That one over there, Adam, you can't touch it. Don't eat it. If you, the, the moment you eat of this, you will die. And so Eve is in the garden and the serpent, the enemy, the devil, he persuaded her. He didn't force her. Something we got to understand, the devil can't make us do anything. We choose to obey him. We choose to sin. Now, don't forget that we choose to sin. So when Adam and Eve chose to reach up, take the fruit from the tree to bite into it, they sinned. They rebelled against God's rule. And once they sinned, death entered the world. Now, when we are born, we are born automatically with a desire to do the wrong instead of the right. It's in our DNA. We have Adam's DNA. But the blessing is then you have to be born again. You give your heart to Jesus. You give your heart to the Lord. And then he will change how the blood even flows through your body. He changes how your mindset is. He changes your desires of your heart. No longer do you desire to do the things the world's way. You desire to do them the kingdom's way. But but I don't want to jump too far ahead. That's sin. Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So sin enters the world. Sin affects all mankind, because if you look in Romans three and twenty three, it says all for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, a lot of people will quote that scripture to say, don't judge me because everybody sins. Don't 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 speak of my sin because everyone sins now. That verse means that don't think of yourself too highly, but it doesn't mean don't hold each other accountable. It should drive us to see that all of us have sin, which means all of us need Jesus. All of us need Jesus because the sin, the penalty, the price of sin, the wage of sin is death. And if you don't want to die in your sins, then we need to move forward to the next term salvation salvation it means deliverance from sin and its consequences deliverance from the sin and its consequences in john 3 16 and 17 it says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life verse 17 says for god sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. God loved you and I so much. He loved us so much that when Adam and Eve sinned and brought death into the world, he didn't want to see his most prized creation, his sons and daughters, us to perish. So in order to remedy that, he sent Jesus Christ, his son to the earth to die in our place, to set us free salvation 
to be set free from sin and its consequences, which means you no longer have to die. Now, when I say die, I mean eternal death, eternal separation from God. We might die in this physical body, but once we die with this body, then we are present with the Lord. Our spirit then is returned to the Lord if we've accepted Jesus Christ. Now, if we haven't accepted Jesus Christ, we cannot be saved. All right. In Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. Now, in our church, we have a saying, what you believe, you will obey. And what you obey, you will become. So if you say you believe that God raised him from the dead, if you really believe that you would live a certain way, because I'm so grateful that you traded places with me, Lord, and that you died for my sins. I'm so grateful. And I believe that so much that I'm going to live my life above sin. I'm going to take the power that you've placed within me and I'm going to defeat this sin. Every time sin tries to whisper in my ear, I'm going to push it away the same way I used to push God away. Now I push sin away. I've been saved. I've been saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth cons confession is made unto salvation. You've got to open up your mouth and tell God you want him in there. Tell God you want him in your life. Open up your mouth and say, I want to follow you. Open up your mouth and say, my life is not right. I acknowledge that. And I want to be with you, Lord. I want you to be the ruler of my life. When you speak that and you say, I believe that you are the son of God. And I believe that you raised from the dead. You are no longer in some tomb, some grave, but you are at the right hand of God in heaven. And one day you're going to come back for me and for everyone else who has believed. When you say that and then you start living it out, that's when you know you really believe. And that's when you know you're saved. A lot of people think they're saved because they go to church. Many people go to church and they are not saved. Saved means to be rescued or delivered from sin and its consequences. You, you have the power over sin once Jesus died on that cross and rose from the dead again. No longer does sin have to rule in your life. No longer does sin have to tell me what to do. I can push sin away now. I can push sin around. Sin used to push me around. Now I win over sin because of what's within me. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All right. Now, here's something I don't, you, don't want you to forget. You aren't just saved to go to heaven. You don't just get saved to go to heaven. God saves us to serve. He saves us. He delivers you. And then he expects you to go out and bring others to the one that can deliver them. Don't forget that. That's the main reason why you've been saved. To be a witness to those who are not. To tell them the truth. Tell them about what Jesus has done in your life and how who Jesus is to you and how Jesus wants to do the same for them. Tell them. And then that leads us to the last term for today. Now, of course, there's many, 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 many more terms we can concentrate on. But I wanted to concentrate on just these three for today. So we have sin. We have salvation. And then the last one, sanctification. Sanctification. It means to set apart as sacred or the process of making one holy to set apart as sacred or it also means the process of being made holy. See, sanctif sanctification is a process. Each day we awake, we have a choice to make each day. So if God blesses you with a tomorrow, you wake up with new graces, new mercies, and you have to make a new choice. Every single day. Do I resist the spirit's training or do I embrace that guidance and I embrace the change that the spirit wants to bring about in my life? Do I resist or do I embrace? It's our choice every day. 
See, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we experience what's called initial sanctification. That's just the start. It doesn't stop there. You're just initially set aside for sacred purpose. All right. As we walk with God daily, we walk with him daily. He starts to lead us and move us toward what's called entire sanctification. All right. Most of us will experience entire sanctification at the returning of Jesus Christ. But every day he's pulling us closer and closer toward being entirely sanctified, entirely set aside, entirely made holy. John 17 and 17 says, sanctify them through thy word. I'm sorry, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. These are Jesus's words. He's praying to God. See, the more word we commit to our lives and the more word we obey, the more we will begin to live lives that shows we are apart from the world. The more word we store in our hearts, the more we're going to move further and further and further away from who we used to be and what the world looks like. A person should be able to look at our lives and know for certain that we belong to Jesus Christ because we've been sanctified. We say that term all the time. People throw it around, I'm sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. They filled with something, but I don't know if it's the Holy Ghost. Because if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you'd be set aside further and further and further each day you're awake because you follow God more closely each day. John 17 and 16 says this. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So sin entered into the world and it it warranted all of our death. Our death was the price that had to be paid. But Jesus loved us so much that he traded places and offers us salvation. Now, if you accept salvation and you pray and ask God into your heart and it doesn't take a magical prayer, it's just, Lord, I need you. Lord, I honor you as my Lord. I believe that you're the son of God. I believe that you rose from the dead again and I want to live for you. Bam. That simple. You pray that prayer and watch what God will do. And then if you pray that prayer, he will enter your heart and you have immediate sanctification. You have initial sanctification. Right then at that moment, God has set you apart to do something special with you. And if you will start listening to his spirit and you'll start being guided by his spirit each day, he'll set you apart further and further and further. And before you know it, you'll look up and you can't remember the last time you sinned. You know, I can't remember. It used to be I sinned every 15 minutes or so. Every time my mouth opened, I was about to sin. Now, I can't remember the last time I sinned. You know why? Because you're embracing your process of sanctification. And it's my prayer, it's my desire that you will truly grasp these three terms. Don't be fooled anymore. Sin is real. Sin is going to cause millions upon millions upon millions to go to hell because they won't acknowledge what they do is sin. They'll try to say it's an error. They'll try to call it a mistake. God calls it sin. And then we've learned that the wages of sin is death. And the only way to not have to pay the price yourself is to accept that Jesus paid it for you. And if you accept that Jesus paid it for you, you've got to change your life. You got to swap lives with him. No longer do you live for you, you live for him. And when you start living for him, you'll find yourself being sanctified every day a little bit more. So I pray that these three terms make sense to you. I pray that you will start to Spend more time in your word to understand God more fully, to grow more. The more words you have, the more sanctified you will be. Don't forget that. The more you'll be set apart from this world. 
If you have any comments, any questions, I pray that you'll shoot me an email, got to live right at gmail.com. Also for the video, I pray that you will like the video, that you will subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel and that you will share it with as many people as possible. God bless you until we see each other again. Thank you for joining me on the Living the Life Show.